हेलो बच्चा लोग होप यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट एंड टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम प्रॉब्लम्स फ्रॉम द टॉपिक फ्रॉम द चैप्टर ऑफ एल डी हेड्स एंड किटोन्स एंड दीज आर द सम ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स व्हिच आई हैव टेकन फ्रॉम द एम एस चौहान सर्स बुक सो लेट्स डू सम एग्जॉस्टिव डिस्कशन ऑन दिस सिंस लास्ट वन वीक आई एम गेटिंग दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम यूर एंड हाउ टू स्टार्ट द प्रॉब्लम इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री दिस इज द फर्स्ट क्वारी मेनी ऑफ यू पीपल हैव सेट and uh, many of you said that you have learnt all the reagents still you are not getting the confidence in organic chemistry so endeavor of mine while solving these problems is to show you that how i take up the topic how how a given reaction is to be uh, you know started with so hope after the session you would feel strengthened with the things that which way the reaction has to go for and which way it is to be dealt with all the ways and means which are there while solving the problem of organic chemistry i will place it in front of you and then you have to learn from it so here comes the first question which is being sent by somebody so here is a compound which is to be underwent hydrolysis this is uh, shown that it is to undergo hydrolysis and during this hydrolysis no medium is mentioned here whether it is acidic or basic so first way to tackle the problem if in case you don't know anything about it first you simply would check that how many carbon atoms are there in the starting material so if you could see here the starting material is having in if i would take the upper part of this this part of the entity you have five carbons here you have five carbons here and in the lower end of this molecule you have three carbons one is this so this means you have five carbons and three carbons joined through each other through a ester linkage and along with it you also have to check that how many how many carbon atoms are there in the final product the options they have shown how many carbon atoms are there 1 2 3 4 and this is the fifth and the sixth here you have six carbon here you could see 1 2 3 4 5 and this is the sixth one six carbon and simply here you could see 1 2 3 4 and this this is having five carbon and 1 2 3 4 5 so sometimes you people just don't see it that way but it's not a right way but in a way it gives you a little insight that you may rule out some options now you could see that either the answer would be ab out of ab or between the c or d now let us proceed for this this is one way of seeing the thing into uh, perspective now let us face some uh, discussion on to this that what we can think about it now if you could see categorically the, the, in this this compound you uh, many of you people ask me that is it having a acetyl linkage i would not uh, ex uh, directly would say it is a acetyl linkage acetyl linkage is where you would have uh, two alkoxy groups are there on to the same carbon this is a acetyl linkage or in a way uh, this is a cyclic acetyl type of a thing this is this we can say it has to be uh, acetyl it is not uh, purely acetyl because this in a way can be said as a ester part but it seems like that so this can be a uh, area of concern now the point is that how to we how do we go now for this particular discussion so you have to treat it with water so what we best can see ether is having a carbonyl group which is delta positive delta negative so the lone pair may attack on to this carbon and this goes like this as a consequence you would get o negative here and you end up getting a positive charge on this part this is the one thing which you can uh, categorically see here in this particular discussion okay so this is one thing now the point here is that if in case i will bring it back and open up this and this oxygen would get a negative charge and it may abstract h positive from here so as a consequence what else you can see here you may see something like this happening so you would get a double bond here along with this you would get oh and from this angle you would get a oh isn't it so this is intramolecular proton exchange has happened from this part to this part intramolecular proton exchange intramolecular proton exchange has happened so this is one of the thing which we can think around this particular discussion and same part can happen from this side as well because this part of the this side of the 
molecule also still is having a uh, uh, what you call that as to be a ester part so this again can do the same thing so as a consequence what we end up getting here is on both sides you may get coh groups you would get coh groups and along with it you would get oh OH onto the same carbon. So this is the one way, one best way or one best uh, products which we may think about uh, this question to happen. And the carbon carrying two uh, OH groups onto the same carbon is not very stable. It may undergo dehydration like this, OH from here, H from here. And this happens to go to give you acetone. But as a matter of fact, these two options are not there in the paper, in the options. So the, this means the examiner is wanting us to take the reaction to some other direction as well. And one important thing which we may think about it, if, if in case they have wrote it that way, that if we have heated it, it is a case of 1,3-dioic acid. So if 1,3-dioic acid is heated, it loses out carbon dioxide for which you can refer to this particular um, video shown above so this decarboxylation can happen and this can give you a monocarboxylic acid with a loss of carbon dioxide but these options are not there so this means the examiner is asking us to think in some other direction so the other direction we can think it like this also that if in case i just would take it like this that uh, this part happens to undergo ionization this is the negative part now, the three-membered ring which we are having with us is not very stable. It won't to open up because of the angle strain. So, I may say it like this, that if in case I just would attack onto this carbon, this carbon attacks this carbon and this bond comes here and this opens like this. Now, in that sense, what I do get here is something like this. This O negative, which was having a negative charge, now got joined here. This bond goes here, this goes here, and as a matter of fact, you also would receive, now see here, here you have a double bond, and this got connected here, and you happen to get something like this. This is the thing which you happen to get. Am I right or not? So let me explain it once more. This part attacks here, this goes here, so here generation. Here is the generation of uh, uh, double bond and the ring has become the ring has uh, taken up a shape of a five membered ring now what else you can think again it is going back to uh, get back the proton and you happen to receive this entity so here again this is coh and this part becomes negative and the h positive which it has lost this h positive goes to this part and as a matter of fact we would have received a structure somewhat like this O and it is now having a five membered ring along with COH group. Now this is what you have to do it this way. So which answer do you get out of this? So I hope you have understood. So the answer to this question shall be the C option. C would be the best answer. Otherwise you may have ruled out the A and B option as well. Now let's do one more question in a speedy way. This is again a very interesting question which is being asked by you people. So here in this case, first you have to take it like this, that this is RCN or let me write it on to the next page. So here are, in this type of a question, uh, you need to see that you should be knowing the uh, reagents. What is the role being played by these reagent? What is this reagent is very important thing. And along with it is also going to check the mechanistic viewpoint how these reagents are attacking these particular carbons or this particular um, site of attack is where is also very interesting to see into this because they have made this as isotopic. Since they have made it isotopic, the things have become little tricky and interesting. Now, which way we have to go for? Now, first I would take it as cyanide. Just take it like this. If the cyanide is being treated with RMGCL, now, RMGCL, if you know, methyl magnesium bromide, which is a Grignard reagent, Grignard reagent is a source of carbon ion. Always remember a source of carbon ion. It may act as a source of carbon ion, that is R negative. So, this in a way would attack because this is delta positive, this is delta negative. And now this would attack this carbon and this will open up like this. 
Now, as a consequence, what you would receive here, you would get something like this. Isotopic carbon we will see into later stage. Now, here you get CH3 and this would become N and along with that MgBr. This is first thing you would get around this particular uh, part. Now, the point is that it is to be now uh, uh, underwent hydrolysis. It is to be treated with uh, acidic water. So, R, CH3, double bond N and this is being hydrolyzed with uh, water. So, H3O positive, H positive. So, what it will do? It simply would do RCH3. This would become NH and along with it, what goes out with this? The thing which would go out along with the water, uh, the thing which would go out with the water is hydroxy magnesium bromide. This would leave the reaction mixture. Now, this what we have generated, this is what you call it as I mean. In some other video, I have explained it in very categorical statement that whenever you have I mean in acidic medium, it doesn't stop here. I mean in acidic medium because if you could see this carefully and if I just would turn this into this part, just feel it with me. Now, if you would see what is the atomic number of this, nitrogen is 7, hydrogen is 1. And this is oxygen, which is 8. So, you just have converted NH into O. So, in a way, always remember, when you have NH, if you have something like this versus, versus something like this, these are almost iso-electronic, iso-structural type of an entity. So, which generally we would have not seen it that way. Now, how this has happened, that is also a very interesting discussion. Now, what we have done? I just have taken R uh, CH3 double bond NH. It is to be treated with water in acidic medium. This is what we are supposed to see. That mechanistic viewpoint would be what? So, this is having a lone pair, which obviously would be attacked by the lone pair is being attacked by the H positive. So, you would get something NH2 positive and here you would get CH3. Now, what shall then be the next case? The next case would be the water is going to attack onto this carbon so that the nitrogen would uh, relieve of uh, positive charge. So, what shall then I be getting? So, here you would get something like this, CH3, this becomes NH2. Now, what now what could be the next viewpoint? So, intramolecular proton exchange, this H positive still would want to attack onto the lone pair of the nitrogen. As a consequence, you end up getting something like this. So interesting it is, NH3 positive. Now nitrogen carrying a positive charge can be easily thrown out, although, take, uh, although uh, taking up or removing NH with oxygen would require a good amount of hydrolysis, heating is required, but in a way, this would be the right approach to this discussion. So, this lone pair comes here, this throws out as a consequence what you shall then be receiving. The other thing which you would receive here is NO double bond positive along with CH3 and NH3 went out. So, this NH3 now would abstract this H positive to convert into ammonium ion and you end up getting a ketone. So basically, what is the rule of the game? The rule of the game in this case would be that if you have a cyanide treated with methyl magnesium bromide, you end up getting a ketone. So here you would receive a ketone and that ketone, uh, we, uh, we haven't uh, did anything in terms of rearrangement or something like that. This carbon still is isotopic in the ketone also. Now, what I am trying to say is, is a very interesting question here also, that if you have treated cyanide with methyl magnesium bromide, what we are saying, followed by hydrolysis, you happen to get a ketone. Now, here, here generally people ask me a very important question that ketone still can attack the RMGCL. RMGCL still can attack this particular carbon. Why it did not attack now? Now, the point here is, getting the cyanide, converting the cyanide into this ketone has happened after hydrolysis. After hydrolysis, once you have hydrolyzed it to get the ketone, it now cannot attack 
the RMGCL because if the system is containing this ketone and the acidic medium and you are adding RMGCL, RMGCL would not want to attack onto the carbonyl carbon because it's a strong base, it would want to attack the H positive of the acid. So this is also very important. So make it a point, although ketone get convert, although cyanide got converted into ketone, but this ketone would now not be reacting with RMGCL because this has this we have received after hydrolysis. Now, this is a important discussion which you always have to keep it in mind. Now, what is what we have done? So, we simply have done this is cyanide 14. So, this has been treated with RMGCL. Now, let me cut short the long story short. So, you happen to receive something like this CH3 and ketone. So, this is still 14. Now, the next reagent which they have used is sodium hypoiodite. So, this basically is a reagent which is a reagent which we receive when we treat iodine with NaOH. Iodine with NaOH. This is a reagent which is meant for haloform reaction. Haloform reaction or you may say iodoform reaction. So, always remember that whenever you are going to take iodine, treating iodine with any alkaline medium, it is not that you have to take any OH. Any alkaline medium, if is there in the um, system with a iodine, so what basically we this is this is, engages a bit of organic uh, inorganic also. So if you have an alkaline medium, this is a non-polar compound. So this attacks this. This goes like this. Happens to give you OH, and this I negative goes out, and this in a way then ionizes to give you this entity along with HI. So, this is a good oxidizing agent which is we call it as hypoiodite because in the hypoiodite, iodine is in plus one oxidation state. So, it want to receive electron and change into iodine. So, in a process, if it is being treated with some organic, organic substrate, organic substrate is being treated with OI negative. So, what it would do? It want to do reduction it want to do want to undergo reduction so it is a oxidizing agent and the organic moiety get oxidized so this would act as a reducing agent so what basically we are trying to say here is that simply you have always have to remember that if in case you have with you any uh, substrate just like alcohol if you have and if you want to this convert this alcohol into ketone, so one of the reagent which you may use here along with there are many reagents here. So one of the reagent which you can use is the uh, entity which is generated during the iodoform reaction from the iodine and OH negative. So this reagent in a way gives you hypoiodite which converts this um, carbon. It got oxidized to ketone and it itself get reduced. So this is one point. Now the point here is that we have received a ketone, the ketone is of this type, the ketone is of this type uh, and this was 14, this is 14. Now here I am not explaining the iodoform uh, reactions mechanism, it would take time but otherwise what you always have to remember that if iodine in presence of OH negative is there, then uh, if a if a starting material is having methyl group adjacent to CO, so this entity during iodoform reaction would convert into CHI3. This is a very detailed mechanism. In some other video, I will explain it in detail. And along with it, the other entity which you are left with, that will change into sodium salt of carboxylic acid. Because here you would get this thing you would end up getting this thing sodium salt of carboxylic acid so the tip of the remember it is having again a good mechanism engaged in in in, in discussing this particular problem but here i'm just giving you a tip to remember so tip to remember here is that if in a case if in a case you have something like this this is uh, so in some other video i will explain it in more detail that if you have some entity like this that at the corner you have CH3, CH3, uh, then it is treated with iodine in presence of OH negative. This is a very detailed one as I am saying. So, this would convert this part into CHI3 which would appear as a yellow PPT. This would change into yellow PPT, yellow precipitates and along with it you would get the 
one carbon less than the starting material as a sodium salt of carboxylic acid. So this part would change into sodium salt of carboxylic acid or carboxylic acid salt depending on the counter ion as a cation whichever is there in the reaction. So this is another question which is of great importance. Now, let, now let's see what option do I get because this carbon is still 14 so it would remain 14. So uh, the carboxylic acid carbon would still be the 14 one. So where we were, let me check the answers. So here you don't have 14. In this case, you it is not showing any 14. So this is not the right answer because there is no 14. So here they are showing 14 here, which is wrong. So this would be our right answer because here you would get a 14 onto the carbon and CHI3 would definitely we would not be having any 14 isotopic 14. Let me take a one more question or should we do it in the next video? Okay, let, let's do it in the next video. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. We would be doing one more one two more questions in the upcoming video. Bye bye. Take care.